we are live. Okay, we're on the air. So I think we're pretty much ready to, to get started here. <laughs> okay, we're up there on the screen, and as you can see, the, the button there for live is live. Good afternoon to uh, our audience. Welcome to uh, today's ASA Hangout to uh, talk about uh, the VMC imaging campaign. And uh, our plan today is to basically run this as a tutorial for anyone who is participating or anyone who wishes to participate. You still have uh, more than a week uh, if you wish to sign up. My name is uh, Daniel Skuka. I'm the senior editor for spacecraft operations here at the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany. Uh, we're speaking to you today from the Mars Express mission planning room. Uh, as you can see, it's, a, it's an actual operational area. We, we have some activity going on uh, behind us. Uh, stuff happens here. We're flying this, the mission from here. And I'm joined today, uh, starting on my, my, far, my far right, by Andy Johnston. He is one of the spacecraft operations engineers working on MEX. Yes, that's correct, yeah. So, and Simon Wood, just uh, to, his, uh, to his left, uh, also one of the uh, operation engineers working on, on Mars Express, and Michael Kahn who is working on the mission analysis team here at ESOC and uh, very, very uh, keen and passionate about Mars. And in fact, all of us are. And if you're watching, you probably are too. So thank you very much for, for joining today. What I'd like to do, uh, we're gonna run this for approximately an hour or so. And uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's uh, be clear about how you can send us your questions. We're actually watching live. We've got some assistants uh, here in the room. You can't see them, but they're, they're off camera. We're actually looking at Twitter. So if you tweet a question, please use the VMC schools hashtag, VMC school with an S hashtag. We will we'll see those tweets. You can post a question in uh, Google Plus. Uh, in fact, if you're watching the video screen on Google Plus, you should see uh, somewhere on the, the video box, there's an option for questions. If you click on that, it'll pop up. And if it doesn't immediately pop up, there's uh, that Google grid square appears in the top right, and you can click on that, and you'll you'll have the uh, Q&A app will open, and you can post questions right in uh, in Google Plus. And if you're watching via YouTube, uh, in the ASA channel on YouTube, you can actually post a question uh, as a comment underneath the uh, the video window, and we'll see those. So we'll, we'll see all of those. And uh, of course, after the program, if you still have some questions, you can always email us via vmc at asa.int. Good. Let's talk a little bit about the VMC imaging campaign. It's actually um, a really cool thing. Uh, we're, we're very excited about it, and we're glad to see that uh, a lot of you are already. We've received uh, uh, quite a good number of applications, and we hope uh, most of you, or even all of you, are watching right now, uh, depending on which, which time zone you're in. Um, we are actually going to hand over VMC to you, uh, in the sense that, uh, obviously, we can't actually uh, bring you here to ESOC to sit in the room and, and press the buttons, but we're actually going to take your requests, your imaging requests for this camera, and program those into the Mars Express mission planning system, and on a three-day period in May, uh, roughly between the 25th and 27th, uh, the pointings that you have requested, the targets that you have requested, will actually be, uh, be uh, carried out by Mars Express, and we'll send you those images back to you uh, when, they're, when they're acquired. And your part of the activity, of course, is that we're looking forward to see your project. And your project is wide open. We want to see something scientific, something collaborative, something artistic, something really cool, as best as you can do with those Mars Express images. A uh, quick rundown of the dates, uh, just so that you keep these in the back of your mind. 27th of March at 1200 noon, 12 noon uh, CET time on the 27th of March. That's the cutoff for registrations. If you already have registered, that's great. We've seen them in the system. You're free to go back and amend your registration after today's uh, tutorial. Uh, if you change your mind about what you want to see or, or about the kind of projects you want to do, it's no problem. You can go, go back and re-register. Just use the same name and the same email address so I can match them up uh, with, your, with your first registration. It's, uh, it's no problem. If you have not registered, please do so. Go to aza.int slash VMC. Uh, you can go to various URLs. Azadaudient slash VMC schools, that will work. Go to Azadaudient slash VMC underscore imaging underscore campaign, that will work. 
or go to the uh, uh, homepage and look under the, the recent news uh, uh, list. And you'll see the article announcing it. It gives you full instructions on how to register. So if you haven't, please do so uh, by the uh, 27th. Uh, on the 8th of May, we will announce, we'll have reviewed all the applications, so give us about a month. And the reason why we need that month is to be able to reconcile some, some planning issues, and we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, later on today. Uh, on the 8th of May, we'll announce who has won a slot, and we would love to be able to give slots to everybody who applies. Uh, basically, we will be time limited in the sense of there's only a certain number of slots available. And once the pointings are all reconciled, there's only a certain number that we'll be able to conduct within this, this three-day window in May. So not everybody who registers necessarily will get a slot. Uh, that's the way that is. But on the other hand, we will uh, give as many uh, as we can to the, to the best possible proposals. And if there's any possibility that um, we can share images so that you can still do your project, we'll make sure that happens as well. So our, our, our aim really is to, to get as many eligible applicants uh, as possible to get them a set of images uh, once this is this is finished. On the 20, uh, that'll be on the 8th of May. On the 25th to 27th of May, that's when we'll actually conduct the images, and uh, we'll tell you more about that later on. Uh, and just afterwards, so on the 28th of May, uh, we will download and distribute the images uh, as, as, as quickly and as directly as we can. And then you'll have until uh, the 31st of July or until your school year ends. That's okay, too. Uh, certainly no later than the end of July to submit your project, which we look forward to seeing and we look forward to sharing with the world via our Ars Express blog. Now then, if you want to find out more information about the campaign, as I say, look on our website, uh, look on our Mars Express blog, that's blogs.isa.int slash mex. Uh, and of course, you can just, uh, you just Google uh, VMC and you'll find lots of, uh, lots of information. Okay, without too much uh, too much further ado from me, I want to pass over to Andy Johnson and ask him if he could do a quick overview of Mars Express, the planet, and the mission. Okay, well, um, Mars Express itself, it's been a very brief overview. Um, it was Europe's first mission to Mars, uh, next to relaunching our second one, the, the TGO, the Trace Pass Orbiter. Um, it's been in orbit around Mars for 11 years now, and still producing good science data. Um, now, the BMC camera itself was originally just for one part of Mars Express, that was for the, uh, the Beagle lander when it was released. Um, BMC was there just to, uh, to photograph it as it, as it went out. Um, as for, um, do you more about the BMC itself? No, we can, we'll, we'll jump into that later. Yeah. Okay. No, just, just Mars and, and Mars Express. Well, Mars itself, um, it's of a lot of interest to us because um, we're hoping to get out there, learn a lot more well, based on the planet itself, but also a lot more about our environment, which should help us um, with our atmospheric modeling and um, uh, analyzing how geography ha geology happens throughout, well, on all planets, really, and that should help us understand our own world a lot more. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, in the in the 12 years now that Mars Express has been orbiting Mars, we've had some, some firsts, have we not? We have detected water. Uh, yes, subsurface we water. We have detected methane. And we have, with our HRSC camera, uh, operated by our, our DLR colleagues, or through our DLR colleagues, we've come up with a, a 3D map, basically, of, yeah. of, of the planet. So Mars Express has done some really, really yes. cool stuff. I'm still going strong. So uh, still going strong, yes. Yeah. And hopefully Mars Express will bridge us through to the next mission coming up in a couple of years' time when we launch... Uh, next January. Next January, exactly. January, yeah, that's right, right after Christmas. We launch, we launch ExoMars EDM uh, entry. No, TGO and EDM, just the two spacecraft. Right. Together. One's going down on the surface and the other is in the world. Right. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, uh, that's the mission, that's the planet. And obviously, uh, VMC can see a lot of very cool features on the surface. And we'll, we'll get in, into that now. And actually, Andy, what I'll do is if you want to. Take over this seat. Yes, we'll do. I'll I'll get your PowerPoint uh, working in the Hangout. Okay. And hopefully it's going to work, and I'll I'll flip the button as you as you talk. No problem. Okay. So I promise this won't be death by PowerPoint. This is not too boring. <laughs> Just a, a quick overview of um, BMC and. What sort of quality of images we can expect and the limitations of it. 
Yeah, let's uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no problem. It's a PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. Uh, share screen. Uh, just a moment. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, we just. There we go. And I think it's this one. And. <coughs> okay, we're now sharing. Okay, if we just go back to the very start of this. Yep. Um, I was lost, so quite a few. Uh, there we go. So this is the VMT itself. So you can see the map stick beside it just for some scale. Um, this is just basically it is a space qualified web camera. It was designed and built in the 1990s along with the rest of Mars Express. So when you compare it to like the camera on your cell phone, it seems very, very primitive. But it still functions very well. And again, all it was supposed to do was just re record the release of Beagle Lander. And since we reacted it a few years ago, we've actually got some very, very good uh, images of, uh, of Mars. So yeah, it's quite good. Um, so some things to think about when, uh, when we take some images with this. First of all, Mars is smaller than Earth. So um, we need to keep, to keep the, to take this into account. Also, Mars is quite a bit further away from the sun than Earth is, so it gets um, a lot less illumination. And um, another thing to take into account uh, when we're doing these images is, if we could just go ahead, is that um, Mars Express does not have a circular orbit. So our distance from a planet changes throughout our orbit. Um, this image was um, okay, it's taken actually from a discussion about um, our Phobos flybys. But you can see that at the top of the picture, we're about 300 kilometers from Mars. And down the bottom of the picture, we're our furthest point away. We're, hundred, we're roughly 100,000 kilometers away from Mars. Sorry, I'm very tired today. <laughs> so 10,000 kilometers from Mars, thank you for correcting me. Um, so what I want to do is just, um, using Google Earth, I just want to sort of mimic what uh, VMC images would look like if we took them over Earth. So our farthest point out of 10,000 kilometers, um, this is roughly, this would be the field of view of the MC and roughly the image quality. Okay, this is a, this is obviously a, a Google Earth image, but I just thought it would be easier for people to understand if I use that. You can still, we can still make out um, the landforms, we can still make out deserts, mountains, um, we can still recognize what we're looking at. So the quality is decent, but it's not amazing. Um, now, if we were to sort of zoom into the center of this image, and then we would see what it would look like from 300 kilometers, which would be our closest point to Mars. And here we have this desolate, uninhabited part of the world called Scotland. Um, you can see now that we can actually start to make out, um, even with this web camera, we can still make out lakes, mountains, just about make out um, cities and civilization. Okay, obviously we, we don't have these things on Mars, but this is just so you can get into your mind um, what the capabilities of VMC are and um, what to reasonably expect from it. Now, um, if we just move on a bit, I want to just discuss where VMC is mounted on Mars Express and the angles pointed at. Um, now, if you look at the uh, the orange marking, um, this this um, VMC. Well, actually, let's talk about the blue first because VMC is pointed off slightly at an angle. Actually, I'm showing the model if we. Um, Swap back to just the camera again. Okay, so we've got the, the Mars. I'll come up closer. We have the Mars Express model here. So all of our sensors are mounted on the top. So all of them point directly away from this surface of this uh, face of the spacecraft, apart from VMC. It's angled at, um, it's actually mounted about here. It's angled at 19 degrees. Um, towards this wing. That was because Beagle was mounted in the middle here and it was to get a good view of Beagle as it's separating and released. So if we just go to our next image on the PowerPoint thing, I can show you what that normally means in our observations of VMC. Now I'm going to ask you to, uh, to flip between two images kind of quickly so that we can see um, if we just move to the next one. So in the, the left hand side there's sort of a, looks like a coffee cup stain this dark crater, that's Gale Crater, where Curiosity currently is. Now, if we just flip between these two images, and back again, just kind of rapidly, um, you can see that Gale Crater stays in the same point in this image. That's because our main instruments were pointed at Gale Crater at that time. The VMC is pointed off by this 19 degrees. So this is what we normally end up with when we do a flyby. Um, so if you do an observation of VMC. But 
um, for the summer, we're actually be pointing the VMC up wherever is requested to do so. So we won't get this offset. And yeah, and this also gives you a, a rough idea of the sort of images we can get. Um, I don't, would you like to talk more about the um, the planning side, uh, or would you like to discuss more about the images? Of yeah, talk, talk more about the images we'll okay. have to uh, if you just go back one again to the, the Gil Crater one, if you see the where Mars meets space, we can just see along the edge there, we can see some clouds. So EMC doesn't just pick up landforms, we can also pick up things in the atmosphere too. And if we just go down to the next one, um, we can see again, this one, it's, it's quite overexposed, but it does show some quite nice cloud layers warming there. And if we move on again, another, these are sort of the, my favorite BMC pictures with what these at. Um, I don't know whether it's sunrise or sunset, but we can start to see the, the light coming through all these cloud layers um, over Mars. I think this was back in uh, 2009 we took this image. And I think what we could do now then is that we could talk about some of the, the features on Mars, and uh, maybe Mikhail could help me out here. He's um, a lot more knowledgeable about the surface itself. So here we have um, Elysium Mons, and uh, I quite like this image because we get some nice shadows from it, and it gives the idea of how tall these volcanoes are. Would anyone like to add on Elysium Mons? Um, well, actually, south of Elysium Mons are these two, but this is a little bit to the left, bottom left, and we have, uh, um, we would have Elysium Planitia, that's a, a, a plane where next year, in September, an American uh, probe is going to land, it's called INSIGHT. So actually, this is a site which is of interest for science. It's not just some, it's, it's well chosen. <laughs> okay, if we just move on to the, the next slide, we can just see these are the more famous volcanoes on Mars. So we have um, off to the, uh, well, the, the largest one being um, Olympus Mons. And the um, yeah, Olympus Mons is the, the one to the right, if you look at this triangle, it's the vertex of this triangle. And then this uh, line, uh, this crater chain, uh, this, this uh, volcano chain. In the middle, you have Pavonis. And on the one end, you have one called Astraeus, and the other is Ar Arsia Mons. Pavonis is interesting because it's right on the equator. And who knows? One day we might have a space elevator on, on Mars, and uh, a good place to, uh, to put the, the surface space for the space elevator would be on the equator, and be right on the summit of this mountain. Okay, if we just move on to our next one, we've got um, we've got Hellas here, which is um, it's an impact crater. Uh, yeah, probably it's, it's, a, it's a huge uh, depression, a huge impact crater, and it's about eight thousand meters deep, so eight kilometers deep. It's uh, like uh, Mount Everest uh, upside down. But it's, it's vast. It's, it's enormous. And the interesting thing about Hellas is that it's if you look at where it is from where this previous in the previous picture we have these volcanoes. It's just about 180 degrees opposite. So, mm -hmm. uh, and these these three volcanoes are sitting on a huge uh, uplift zone, uh, uh, something that came up, uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, it's generally believed that uh, it has to do with this. So, something that the impact uh, created a shock wave that ran through the planet and created and pushed out some material on the other side. Okay. So, without this impact, we wouldn't have the, the huge volcanoes on the other side. And uh, the next slide we move on to, we've got um, Archire. Mm -hmm. oh, that's super right. So um, it's another just, uh, I really like this image as well because if you can see um, again up towards uh, the Terminator where the light meets the dark, you can get some very nice shadows across the craters up there. And again, it, it really shows the, the 3D effects, well, the 3D surface of Mars. And um, if we just move on to the next one, we can see one of the more famous landmarks of Mars. We've got um, Valles Marineris. And the next slide also is a bit further out. And, um, possibly a bit better lighting here, but yeah, I mean, this also kind of gives you an impression of the scale of Alice Mountain is it's a vast, vast um, uh, formation. I think it's said that it's uh, 10 times more of the Grand Canyon in every dimension, so 10 times deeper, 10 times longer, and 10 times wider. And if we just uh, move on to, we've got the poles as well, so the South Pole, and um, if which is not quite spectacular if you move on to the next one. I had to go though because the, the North Pole is just, it's much, much prettier. And this is, we did a low level pass over this when we made um, 
we did some full orbit observations with VMC in the past, and we got this image, and it's, it really is amazing, considering this is taken by a webcam. So um, I, I, I quite like this. And also, just um, this next image doesn't show very much, but it's just, it's, it's just nice, I think, just the, the crescent of Mars. Although and, this, and kind of confirm that this one of the first images that we got from UMC when we recommissioned it. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Although also in, at this time in 2007 there was also a global dust storm on, so I'm not sure how much you would have seen on the surface. But it's just it's just quite a nice image, I think. It doesn't show very much at the surface, but I just think it's it's quite pleasing. Um, now there's the, the next two sides we've got our sequences. Now this one shows um, the the clouds at the poles. Um, this is the North Pole, and we can see these, the, the clouds as they evolve over time. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have a time scale for these. I just picked some that really show the difference on how it, these things do move and change. And um, this this last sequence of four, you've got to look quite carefully. You will see that there is this small black dot, and as we go from top left to top right, and then the next to the bottom, you see this black dot moving down. That's actually the shadow of Phobos as it crosses Mars. That's cool. <laughs> it is quite cool. And we actually got it. We didn't realize the time we were going to get this. Okay, if we'd have discussed it more with the mission planners, they would have, sorry, uh, the um, flight dynamics and the mission plan, they would have told us when we could expect to see this. But we just caught it by accident, and it was it was a really, really cool event. So, um, uh, okay, this is sort of the, bit, the end of my sort of best of VMC um, slideshow. And um, we've got some. Videos we can show which are used for planning and also some we made up of our long full orbit um, observations. Don't we want to show them now or do you want to uh, save them at the end maybe? Let's, let's save this for the end. Maybe okay. we'll switch back to, uh, we'll switch back to, uh, to the camera. Mm -hmm. And okay, we should, be, we should be back on there now. And okay. I'll, uh, I'll give you your seat back in there. Thanks. Okay, we'll just swap back out. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. That was, that was good. And uh, I see a couple of comments. A couple of people were just saying, if we could speak up a little bit, just project your voice towards the mic oh. a little bit. We brought, it, brought the mic a bit closer. I hope that, that works better now. Oh, we'll just make sure that Andy is That's all right. still on the, on the camera there. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Uh, okay, so I think you've got a, a pretty pretty good idea as to what <clears throat> VMC can do, and I, I, I do want to ask one question, Michael. What, what's your favorite target? I mean, of, of those images that we just saw of Mars, what found a way? Pallas Mineris. Pallas Mineris. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's one one possible target uh, for imaging, and VMC, as you can see, shows it in uh, in pretty good uh, pretty good relief. And I, I, I like the fact that you do get a, a 3D effect and uh, you do get shadows. And I think you can do some calculations of those shadows as well. We're going to pass on to Simon and ask uh, him if he could talk a little bit about uh, the VMC campaign, how the planning is going to work, what we're going to do with the uh, pointing requests that, uh, that you send in, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, the process and some of the tools that you can use. And I'll pass over to you, Simon. Right. You know PowerPoint, right? So I'll just no. Just, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess the thing to, to sort of start with is going to be you know, why are we doing this now, and, what, and why does it have to happen um, in, at the end of May? And the reason for it is that we are we enter a period in in May, or to the beginning of the end of May, and mid June, uh, called Solar Conjunction, and uh, we have some props. We're going to do our, our solar conjunction and props. Okay. Uh, you so be, be, no, you, 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 you be Earth, okay. and I'll be. So you be the sun, and I'll so be. What's effectively be, happening be in uh, uh, towards the towards the end of uh, towards the end of May is that the Earth and Mars are effectively going to be opposite sides of the solar system. So the sun is essentially in the way. Uh, now, in, in the lead in and lead out of this period, that actually produces some interesting chances to do some science because we actually do radio soundings of the solar corona. But for normal spacecraft communications, that's pretty bad because we, you know, the, the communications will be disrupted. It'll be, you know, there will be a period, a short period, where we pretty much can't command spacecraft at all. And, uh, and communication is not going to be reliable for a, for a period of time until the Earth and Mars move effectively far enough away from the sun. So the consequence of that is that we don't run the instruments, uh, the science instruments during right. this period, right. which helps us with from the point of view of the VMC because for 
due to technical reasons and the way in which it is connected up to the, 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 the spacecraft's uh, uh, main computer, we can't really run VMC whilst the main science instruments are on. So we normally do our, our normal observations with it uh, at the point at which we do um, our, our wheel offloadings uh, when we would normally have the instruments off. And so what this has thrown up, because there's now going to be this period where the instruments aren't going to be on, and it's fallen just at the start of our normal planning cycle, so it was decided that we would not plan any observations um, at the end of the previous cycle, which then gives us sort of four days before we actually enter the solar conjunction configuration. And so we've now got this, this period where we don't have any science pointings, and so potentially we can we can now actually add in VMC pointings at a position you wouldn't normally be able to do. I, I just want to bring up that point. It's, it's, it's very interesting. All of the VMC images, or the vast majority that you've seen so far publicly, either today in our uh, in, in this presentation or in the Flickr channel, or on the VMC blog, in the, in the MEX blog, those images are normally taken at about 10,000 yes. uh, yeah. kilometers, where it's the, the full disk of Mars. And, and during this three-day opportunity, May, we're actually going to be able to command VMC to acquire images at more or less any point in the orbit. As you saw, that orbit is getting very close to Mars. Uh, we could be getting shots from just a few thousand or even a few hundred kilometers. Yes, I mean, the it's something... So, so actually, the, 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 the schools, the groups, the clubs that take part in this campaign are actually going to, going to be able to get VMC images that nobody has ever gotten before, is what it comes yeah. to. Yeah, it's, it's certainly the, the, that's very much the case. And you know, once we once we realized that we had, we had this opportunity, and you know, to take the type of images that we you know, haven't really been able to do before. Uh, it was then a question of well, what, what should we take, what, 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 what should we image? And it, we then sort of hit on the idea that, well, actually, you know, we've always, VMC was activate, reactivated with the intention of doing outreach and doing educational um, activities with it. So the idea it, it was, well, why don't we, we ask the public, was, uh, what, what would you want to take a picture of? And then we very quickly hit on this idea of, well, let's, let's get schools involved, let's get uh, you know, clubs involved and uh, youth groups and, and, and the like to propose observations. Good stuff. Could you, could you actually just talk us through what will be the process when we close uh, the uh, window for submissions on the 27th of March? Uh, up until the 25th of, of May, when the observations take place, what will the team here do with, with the imaging requests? Right, okay, well, what we, I mean, we will be treating this essentially in the same way that we would do any normal science uh, observation requests. Um, so what we're actually going to be doing is exactly what we do with real instruments, that uh, the pointings will have to be created. And this is one of the reasons why the, the cutoff date is quite seems quite early considering that actually we don't do the observations until the end of May, uh, is that we need time to be able to create the actual necessary pointings because as, um, and as Andy was saying before, if we get to Mars Mars Express, the VMC is mounted um, around about here and the instrument platform on Mars Express is completely fixed, it's rigid, it doesn't turn at all. So we, if we want to take a, an image of a particular point on the planet with any of the instruments, we have to physically turn the spacecraft and aim it at that, that position. So we have to uh, go through and basically create the necessary uh, pointings to say, okay, right, this point, point over here at this point in the orbit, and then later on in the orbit, point over here, and then later on in the orbit, point over there, uh, and so on and so on. And these then need to be checked by the mission planning team and mission planning systems, I'll what's going on behind us right now, actually. And to make sure, and then we'll be looking for things like uh, power constraints, power usage, um, because obviously you know, we, we generate power from the solar arrays, we have batteries, but you know, we have to make sure that at the start of each orbit that those batteries are fully recharged. And some pointings will use more power than others uh, to make sure that the data rate is okay, that we're not generating way more data than we can transmit. And then once we have all of that, we're happy that from an operations point of view, the plan works. That then has to be sent off to our flight dynamics team. And what they are looking at is specifically that they have a whole series of constraints in terms of how we can point the spacecraft and the sequence of pointings that we can do to make sure that they actually are work they're workable and that they're safe. So that, uh, I mean, for example, we can't point the back of the spacecraft at the sun. 
because that's why solar, that's why the, uh, the star trackers are, that's why the radiators are, we'll damage them if we do. And there are limitations on uh, how long each face of the spacecraft can be exposed to the sun uh, to, to basically it's going too hot. And that all of that, uh, that has to be checked by flight dynamics. And so we can't commit to doing an appointing until flight dynamics have come back and said, yes, it passes all of our safety checks and, and, and uh, you can turn the spacecraft at that, at that rate. We can do, you know, we can hold position at that point because it may be the case that if we are trying to hold position at Pericenter when we're traveling very close to the surface of the planet, so our ground track is actually, we're going very, very fast. And so we have a limit at how fast we can rotate anyway. And so again, that has to all be, be checked and verified as being okay. And so uh, once we get all of that back, then we can actually sort of say, okay, right, yes, we can do, we can run at the, these sets of, of observations. So what you're saying is it's, it's a lengthy and complex process, but once we've gone through that, we'll basically have a confirmed list of what, which observations can be made. Yes. And that's when we can go back to the, to the applicants, the, uh, the schools, the clubs, the groups that have, have applied, and we can say, yes, you've got a slot, yes, you've got a slot, or it could be that no, you don't get a slot because uh, we can't we can't image your target. But we'll we'll, we'll, we'll reconcile everything as best yeah, we can. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be it's going to be a case of you know, some of the some of the targets are going to look actually going to look better from higher altitudes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that the issue that we've got at the, with, with this particular period is that we've not long since come out of our eclipse season. So that's basically the obviously we have the eclipse happening on Earth on, uh, uh, on tomorrow, tomorrow morning, tomorrow but, uh, morning yeah. we get them, you get them in space quite a bit, so we have, we're currently in a period at the moment where period, our orbit means that we pass between, uh, in a situation where Mars is between us and the Sun, so we don't get any power. We've just, we'll have just come out of that uh, in, in the end of May, so basically we will be orbiting Mars pretty much along the, what we call the Terminator, so the transition from day to night. And so the paracenter is going to be, you know, at certain positions could be quite could be quite dark, so it may be that actually some uh, targets look better from higher altitudes. In which case, we may be in a position where we see two or three requested targets uh, in one picture. In which case, we can we can we can uh, team up. Okay, good stuff. Good. So we'll we'll be able to announce uh, in uh, in May on the eighth, and after that, then it's just a matter of uploading the commands, generating the commands, uploading the commands, and we wait for the campaign to happen. The yeah, pretty much. We're going to be, uh, you know, again, it's pretty much as we would do normally. We would, uh, once we've got everything back, we, we, we run the system, we run it through the uh, mission planning system, and it's, it's able to then generate the, the necessary commands to the attitude control system to turn the spacecraft and aim at the relevant targets. And then uh, and then once we've got everything in place, then it goes up to the spacecraft, and, um, and then the spacecraft does its thing. And, so, and then it's a case of getting trying to get the data back. So. Right. Yep. Okay, and that should should happen within within a, a day or a couple of days after the yeah. The, so the one of the, I mean, obviously, one of the issues that we, that, that we have is that um, we need a deep space ground station to be able to communicate with Mars Express, mm -hmm. and there's a finite number of those and quite a few deep space missions. Mm -hmm. And so the way it works is there are allotted amount of time on the station, and as part of mission planning, what we have to do is to make sure that the uh, the data downloading fits within within the stations that we've been allocated, and. You know, we may have some carryover from the previous um, month's worth of activities, but we'll, we'll have to sort of wait and see with that. But the objective is to get them back as quickly as possible. Quick as possible. Okay, good stuff. <coughs> Michael, can I pass over to you and can I actually ask you a couple of questions on, I know you've already looked at uh, the Mars Express orbits during this, this, this uh, three day period. And I know you've already looked at uh, a list of, of potential targets. What, uh, uh, what, 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 can you, what can you say about, about some of those targets, some of those surface features? What, uh, what, what catches your eye? Well, as Simon just said, we have a particular orientation of the orbit. And uh, that's just the way it is. So the fact is that uh, the part of the orbit when the spacecraft is high, when it's near its so-called upper center, so it's farthest away from us, always above the morning side, side the morning, uh, so when the sun has just risen. And uh, where it's low, it's in the evening, so it's uh, dark probably, it's, it's dark in those locations. It's a bit unfortunate, but there's nothing you can do about that. It's really the way it is, but uh, that just means, on the other hand, that means that you could get 
nice panoramic views with deep shadows. Uh, with long, large deep shadows, and those are physically so, so they're really pretty. Uh, they, if the sun is, is shining down vertically, then it tends to be bland and boring and just drowning out all the colors and contrasts. But if the, sh the, the sun is low, then the shadows are deep, and uh, it's quite attractive to look at that. That would exaggerate the uh, apparent uh, height of, of hills and the depth of, of valleys. And it looks really nice. So from the aesthetic point of view, that's nice. But I think it's also interesting to, to, to look at this from the point of view of uh, topology, because you can then really understand, it's, it's really to understand what the surface roughness, what the surface features are like. You can really understand what it means to have a mountain on Mars, so these mountains are massive. Right. If we got a clear uh, shot with uh, a shadow of a, of a of surface feature, can we actually do some calculations with that? Could we could we use the, the basic geometry to to calculate the height of of, of Olympus Mons? Absolutely. Example? If you know the elevation of the sun, and that's well, straightforward to calculate. Uh, there's also some software that does it for you. Um, then indeed, it's just simple geometry to to calculate. How high that feature is. Okay. It's all shallow. Cast on, shallow. On, on, on the subject of the, the software uh, side of things, um, we've put on um, our website and on the blog um, mm -hmm. downloads for there's a, a, a free uh, planetary uh, software. So called, visualization package. Yeah, called Celestia. Celestia. Um, right. And we actually have a we have a Mars Express model uh, for that, and we've basically run it through, uh, we have a little uh, tool we've developed here that actually allows us to convert the, the real uh, data coming from flight dynamics uh, into a, an orbit file for Celestia. So you would just could, let's... Could, could we actually hop back over to your yes, PowerPoint and see that? Do you want to take over my, my seat there? Yeah. Well, if, if this is a good time for... Mm -hmm. okay, so what we've, what, what we've done, and I think it is actually currently on the blog at the moment, but we can run through it now. Yeah, so we've, uh, we, we've generated basically what our orbit will look like um, for those few days, and so as you can see, we've got um, the yellow line is basically the, uh, the terminator. This is really quite slow. It's, it's because we're encoding through Google, uh, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the version on the blog is much better. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the version on the blog does run in real time. Um, so as you can see, we at the closest we spend very little time, very close. To Planets. So uh, the bulk of it is going to be these these views at altitude, and uh, the as we said, the yellow line basically is the terminator. So it, it, it is the switch from day to night. Um, we find the contrast in nature is in, in uh, the is quite sharp. So I would expect stuff the other side of the terminator to be pretty dark. Okay, yeah, that's that's running a little slow on uh, through the Google encoding, but it, it gives the idea. The, the full yeah. version is in the yeah, and the, the uh, as I say, we've we've put the uh, we've put the planetary grid on there just to get an idea of where we are in relation to to, uh, to, to various features on the surface. And so, right. if you've got a there's a few uh, topographical maps of the planet. I think there's there's one that uh, <coughs> the guy used for the ground track plot we've got on the, on the blog, and the uh, US Geological Society's okay. got quite a few as well. So. Uh, you should be able to sort of tie those up with uh, what you see on there. Okay, Andy, do you want to go through any more of the slides? Well, we've got um, we've got two. It was asked, um, so one of our questions, and um, would it be possible to make videos up from um, sequences of slides? So, twice we've done full orbits of, of Mars using the VMC camera pointed uh, down towards Mars, and we can show both of them. If, uh, hope they run quickly. If not. Um, one of them is already in our Flickr account, that's, and we'll post the other one as well. That's the first one. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, so, it'll, it'll, it'll run a bit slow here in, in the Google Hangout mm -hmm. window, but the, the full one is in YouTube and the blogs. Yeah, but it also gives you an um, idea of what Sam said, that as we get closer, the spaceship gets much faster as it passes over the planet. So this is where, okay, this is just coming back out of the, um, uh, of the dark side, uh, passing over the North Pole, and then going back up to the highest point of our orbit. So I mean, okay, this is time-wise. This was seven hours, so it's it's obviously heavily compressed, and you got a nice. And yeah, that uh, was nice. What was it just? Uh, oh yes, right at the very far, end there. Yeah, yes, the, four buses zips past. This is really. Uh, if you look, you'll see four coming from top to bottom as a little black dot. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite nice. Okay, and I think you, there's a second version. Uh, yeah. No, that's the end of it. Uh, oh, no, we should the second version. No, that, that's right. Here, here's the, yeah. the second version. It was, was done. Uh, yeah, this one contains more frames. Um, the previous one, we had three different uh, exposure settings on the camera yeah. and chose the best. So we're basically binned two thirds of our images to make the first video. So this one, okay, it's running a bit slow because of the compression today. Yeah. But um, there's a lot more images in this one. And this is the one we've got on our Flickr account. So right. um, if people want to look at it, it's probably better if they look at it themselves. I mean, what's on the screen at the moment, you can just see, just going over there, just have a shot now, is the, this is the South Pole. So you can see that there's a sort of visible difference in size between that and what you see at the North Pole. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's better if people just uh, look at this themselves off of the, uh, yeah. the Flickr account. It's maybe not too great to show up here. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, I think we're uh, we're almost ready to switch to uh, some questions that people have been sending in, and um, I want to start off very quickly. We did we'll do this sort of in priority, and uh, we had gotten some questions from um, I think it was uh, Dave Pentecost sent these in. I think he's in in the U.S. and he's keen to. Uh, that's right. He's uh, East Village Planetarium in the Lower East Side Girls Club. New York, Dave, I hope you're watching. Uh, and if not, we'll pick it up in the replay. <laughs> um, we actually sent in a, a number of questions. I think we've touched on most of these. Uh, we just highlight them. One is, what is the effective resolution of the images from the Mars webcam? And oh, yeah, sure. Uh, sorry. Sure. Oh, right yeah. um, I can just give you some of the numbers to go with it. Um, I mean, it's sort of probably worth mentioning that we, we refer to it as the Mars webcam mainly because it's the the images that you get out of it are basically comparable to what you would have got from a, a webcam that you walked into a PC store and bought back in 2003. Yeah. So that's the kind of. If we just go back one just now, just to um, just give some of the numbers. Um, I think you asked. Um, well, from this, we can get our idea of the field of view. Okay, it's 40 degrees wide. Um, that gives us um, just under 11 and a half kilometers per pixel. Um, we'll, that's assuming just the raw values from the EMC. Once it um, converts to color, we start to lose all of that. So we, it's, it ends up possibly around about 20 kilometers per pixel. Um, and also the field of view, if we were to assume that um, just with this height of 10,000 kilometers that is a flat surface, then that's about 7,300 kilometers wide. So this is why on this image of Earth, okay, we can see the curvature of the Earth and the edges of the images, but when we look at this from Mars, the whole globe fits in the image. Uh, if we just go into the zoomed in picture, I'll just give you some numbers from that. Um, okay, at this scale, we're talking around about a third of a kilometer per pixel. Okay, and again, with the compression, well, sorry, with the when it converts to color, we lose a bit of that. So probably around about half a kilometer per pixel, sort of, in, in that region. And the field of view here, again, assuming it was a flat surface below the center point, would be uh, about 220 kilometers. And the, the resolution of each image that's taken is uh, 640 by 480 pixels. It's, uh, as I say, it's a, it's a sort of standard typical Early, mm. early 2000s webcam come in the in the image size and the, the quality. So that's 256 uh, colors. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, so I, I think you've covered most of uh, what uh, what David asked. He also said what's the area of coverage, which I think we've addressed. Yeah. Uh, can you provide us with sample images? Well, of course, yeah. in our in our blog the, the or in the Flickr account. There's, 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 there's thousands. Of there's thousands. Of yes. Right, so. Uh, so will we have access to stills or video or still sequences that, that can be assembled into clips? Well, well yes, this yeah. is what we did. Yeah, we basically yeah. assembled still um, our sequence of stills into um, into video just using um, software that's available. Um, well, there's even free software available on the internet that can do that for you. Right. So VMC basically generates still images. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the way the the way that the, the the camera software works on board is that we give it uh, a uh, number of images we wanted to take, exposure settings that we wanted to use, and then it will cycle through those um, one at a time. It takes roughly a picture a minute. Okay. 
Okay, great. We'll go now over to uh, Google Plus, and I can see there are a number of questions uh, already coming up in the uh, in the channel there. And we'll just I'll look at the first uh, one coming up here. Just let me see what we see. We've got. Uh, uh, Great. Okay, we have a question from Robert uh, Cahill, and he says, uh, do I need to give a target based on the nine that we said were best? Michael, that was based on your uh, recommendations that I put in the blog. He says, do I actually need to give you a target in an actual time when I want you to take the picture? Um, well, I, we certainly don't need to restrict it to, uh, to the nine. That mm -hmm. we were, they were just some suggestions to get you started. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, suggest anything really. Um, if it's, I mean, obviously some stuff will be more possible than others. Um, if you want to have uh, a look trying to use Celestia to work out what you think might work and what wouldn't, then um, then feel free. But uh, you know, we'll we're not necessarily sort of going to go. Oh, well, we don't want to take a picture of that. It's it's up to you guys really. So. And I, I it's just a, a moment to emphasize that the project that you, that the schools or the groups are, are going to, to uh, uh, submit afterwards, they actually could be could be an artistic project, it could be a scientific project. So really, what, what you do with the image is kind of up to up yeah. To and, and, and to some extent, in terms of what's actually going to get selected, I mean, the project really is what we're with what we're interested in. I mean, we're not expecting you to publish journals in Nature out of this. Um, I mean, okay, if you do, then brilliant. Uh, um, you know, we want to see a we want to see a good project. We want to see you know, uh, something that's going to really educate people and get people involved and get people interested and excited about space, science, and engineering. Great. Okay, there's another question uh, also in Google Plus, and it is being asked by someone named Robert Kim, who has said, "What is the sensitivity of the sensor? Uh, what spectral range and what wavelengths of light can it observe?" That's a good question. Mm, I have to go and uh, it's, 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 it, have to go to the I mean, it, it doesn't have any particularly fancy filters on it. I mean, it is just designed to take visual images, and uh, it, it's you know, it's not looking in the infrared or anything. Like it, that. It, it really is a, if, a fourteen-year-old webcam. If, it's, <laughs> if, it, if, if you try and take a picture of the night side of the planet, the picture is going to be dark. I mean, okay. we, can, we can. The only settings we really can fiddle around with with it is is, is the exposure settings, and that's it. Right. So, and I, I, from from my experience with DMC, either it's overexposed, it's underexposed, or it's about right, and that's yeah. Much it. Also, we have some damaged pixels on the camera, possibly some contamination on the lens as well. So, yeah. sorry, this is not the world's best instrument, but it but actually does an awful stuff. lot for what, uh, well, what it was originally intended for. Good stuff. Okay. Okay, uh, let's just uh, go down the list a little bit more, and let's pick uh, Susanna Kovix, who is asking, is there any data uh, on how long Mars Express could remain operational? Uh, how long does, sorry, you Well, actually, saying? currently, I think currently we are confirmed up to the end of 2016, and provisionally confirmed up to the end of 2018. Well, our funding, yes. Yeah, so the spacecraft so itself, view, yeah. the spacecraft itself, is still in good health. Okay, eventually we'll run out of fuel, but projected we still have quite a bit left, and battery life is still good for a few more years. But yeah. again, there's always the, the chance something random could happen, and we lose the spacecraft. But so far, it's in good health, and we hope to keep it going for as long as we possibly can. Okay. The next question is a very good one, and actually I want to uh, pass this over to Michael Kahn, and it's coming from uh, uh, via Twitter, uh, via Mark uh, Sequira, who says, can the VMC capture Martian auroras? You know, we just saw some, some nice aurora pictures recently, uh, didn't we? Was it, oh, I'm, I'm not thinking of it, so Mars was on um, uh, the, the NASA one visiting uh, the with the water vents. With the, oh, the yes, okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, there we saw words, but I, I, we don't see words on the um, well, we, we, we do, but they're not the thing. The problem is they're not in the visible spectrum. So right. I think Maven has, has just possibly suggested that they are, and we may have seen them with, with some of our instruments. It, but, it was, but, yeah. But certainly not the, they, they certainly don't look anything like the northern lights you get on Earth. So um, but we, you wouldn't be able to, to see them with the MC. It's, it's a visual camera. And, and, okay. So. Okay, I'll uh, go back into uh, the question list here and just see what we've got. Uh, I'll, uh, 
Great. It's another one from uh, from Mark, and he's asking, will the Martian polar caps be visible during the BMC campaign? Yes, they will. The southern cap, I think, will be more visible than the northern cap. In this is, I think, the the southern cap will actually be in its entirety as we go over it. The northern cap will be, will be, but it will be partially in shadow. But as Michael was saying, that maybe that will actually bring out a few more features in it uh, with the shadows and everything as we go over it. Uh, so I think again, if you have a look on the on the Celestia video and if you download and install the Celestia stuff yourself, the instructions are all on the blog. Then again, you'll be able to see you'll be able to see that. And maybe for, for Michael, I'm just wondering, what, what, what is the importance in general terms of, of studying the, the polar caps on, on Mars? Why are we interested to get information about that? Polar caps are composed of uh, frozen carbon dioxide and, and frozen water. So, and, and the areas around that um, are uh, soaked with uh, permafrost, so actually water in, in the in the ground and, and there's a big difference between the south and north because the south is on average four kilometers higher so the density is much lower and uh, actually it was thought before that uh, it couldn't hold so we know that there's uh, because the pressure is much higher at, at the northern polar cap we know that uh, there was a lot of water ice we didn't know before mass express that there was a lot of water ice on the in the southern polar region now we we know that there is not just uh, in the polar cap itself, and but also in the polar region. Right. Okay. It's so, so uh, quite important because water is really the one thing we're looking for. Right. Okay. That's 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 very interesting. Uh, a question also from our uh, registrants, and I'll just see if I can scroll down to it here. This is coming from um, Paolo Mauricio, who has actually uh, sent in a. Uh, a registration, and he is asking, uh, I'm interested in obtaining an image that reveals geological features of Mars, eventually resulting from basin water flow. Could it be possible, uh, in a sense, of obtaining a really interesting image to compare with Earth images that show basin water flow? So I think he is, what's uh, being referred to here is, is when um, fast-flowing river uh, enters a, a basin and then loses lots of its sediments. It's called an alluvial fan, and uh, that's what geologists get get extremely excited about because when water slows down, uh, all the sediment will settle, and then you have a interesting, very interesting deposit. But uh, yeah, looking at it from from orbit is probably interesting. At those solutions, I'm not sure that it really tell you very much. We're doing, not doing so just there, yeah. but is there, I mean, are there features on the on the planet that we would be able to see? Well, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's in, in uh, all the major. What, what you need is a large uh, flat bottomed crater, and there are there's several of those. And um, actually, Gale is, is one, uh, and um, another one is uh, was shortlisted for the MSL for for the Curiosity uh, landing site. Uh, it's called Eberswalde, and uh, that's uh, on the southern hemisphere. But I think uh, there would be some opportunities for viewing that. In fact, uh, in fact, there are quite some sites which were shortlisted for current or previous or future missions, which are visible. So one should really look at those because uh, if they have been shortlisted, there's a reason for that. Right. Okay. Another question coming in, this is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, we've already mentioned that it's just a, a webcam, but the question is, so is there an IR filter or can near IR show up in the webcam? I'm not sure. I have to go and <laughs> check on that. Um, as far as I know, it's just filtering for um, red, green, blue, just in the visible spectrum. Um, I will go and check but as far as I'm aware it doesn't go into infrared or near infrared. It's a it's a webcam. Yeah. Basically yeah. yeah. I mean it's it, it, it's it, it the, its purpose is essentially very much in the name. I mean VMC instead of visual monitoring camera the, the, the as I was saying earlier that it's it's attached to Mars Express so that we could basically monitor the deployment of Beagle 2. And so the idea was is that you image Beagle as it's floating away, and then our flight dynamics team here can then analyze the images to see that Beagle is actually on target, which we found out at the beginning of the year that it was. Um, you know, there are similar, I think we posted a, an article on the blog earlier this week, Jason Chen, that there are similar um, 
cameras on other spacecraft. So when we have things that deploy out, and we particularly were interested to see that that actually does deploy. So um, XMM has, has, has a similar camera looking back at its solar arrays to make sure that it was there to check at the point at which they, they did send the commands to, to make the arrays uh, unfold that it worked. Um, Cluster, Sentinel, as it would be uh, with both the arrays and the radar booms. Because I mean, you have to appreciate the spacecraft when they're packed into the launch vehicles. Or to, 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 you know, impressive bit of origami that goes on, and we'll, you know, we need to make sure that these these, these things unfold and, uh, and work correctly. And, and the camera is the best way to do that. So that's why these things are here. So it's not. Uh, it doesn't have all of the fancy filters that are. Uh, HRSC or something has on it. That's a feature where this question is coming from. The older CCDs, yeah, um, whenever you'd film something hot, it would start to glow because it would start picking up infrared as well as the visible spectrum. So right. mm -hmm. I will look into it a bit further just to be sure to give you an honest answer. I mean, we do see some variation in VNC with temperature, but it's usually long exposures when it's been on for a time. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it, it, there's quite a lot of uh, if there's something to look at in the image, then it's usually don't notice. But this is more when we're doing exposures in the, the seconds, yeah. whereas yeah. what we'd be doing here would be in the sort of tens of milliseconds, yeah. so right. it shouldn't be an effect. Okay. One question uh, came up, what is the resolution and actually the field of view uh, is the second question of the camera. I think we've already mentioned that. We said, uh, Andy, you said it was yeah. about one half, one third of a kilometer per pixel at 300 kilometers yeah. altitude. And, and that's over 220 kilometers. Yeah, the field of view roughly is around about 40 degrees. 40 degrees um, high, about 30 and, high. And the resolution of the images is 640 by 40. Okay. Okay, we're coming down to the last few questions here that I see in uh, Google Plus. And just let me, we've already answered that. Actually, well, we could mention that this is not far off from normal if you have a camera, you know, a digital camera or a film camera. Mm -hmm. Then and you have a fifty. What used to be a fifty millimeter lens was is called a standard lens, and that's pretty much the same for you. Yes, in fact, I think that it's a it's a fifty I to fifty films. I think is what it's been compared to in terms of the imaging. Okay, the sensitivity. Yeah. Okay. sensitivity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, one question I see uh, asking: Will there be any data like position and or velocity vectors available via the horizons program? Uh, the, the JPL Horizons website, uh, I think it does offer the... the From Mercy Express? It, it, yeah. it does. It sometimes takes a bit of time to be to update, because um, obviously that has to be fed through from here. I mean, we can certainly, once we've got the pointings set up, um, we actually have in uh, our Celestia tools a script that will actually take not only just the orbit data, but also the attitude of the spacecraft, uh, so it will turn as it would do during the observation. So once we've got all of that loaded and uh, flight dynamics have sent everything back to us, we can turn and put that up for download uh, okay. so you can view it through Celestia. But, okay. but yeah, Horizons would be good enough for this project. It's, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Good, we're just about coming down to the end of questions here. Um, I see a couple more which we've already answered and um, somebody asking, what is the weather like on Mars? <laughs> Dry. Yeah, dry. I'm cold. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was just squeezing the back on the, on the camera. Good. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, geez, guys, I think we've pretty much answered all the questions. Is there anything that you, you can think of that we, we haven't touched on? We wanted to. Well, I think the main thing is just to say you know, you've you've got a, a, another week. Um, yes. You know, hope, hopefully, mm -hmm. in uh, in a week or so's time, you know, we've got some very difficult decisions to make. So it's. Uh, yeah. You know, we've, the, the ones that we've seen so far have been really good. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, if you're thinking about sending one in, then please do. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to make any modifications to one that you've already sent in, then again, feel free. Yeah. I just want to summarize for everybody contact. If they want to get all of us, they can send an email to vmc at isa.int. That will be seen by all of us. Right? Okay. Uh, they can post a query in the blog, blogs.isa.int slash mex, M-E-X. We, we look at that pretty much daily. You can tweet. You can tweet with the hashtag, which is VMC, VMC Schools hashtag. We look at Twitter pretty much uh, every hour, if not every minute. So we'll, we'll certainly see Twitter uh, quickly. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, those are all the main channels. Oh, I'm just hearing one more question that might be a good one. 
Do you want me to read it to you? Sure. Is it, uh, I can actually read it from the, from the screen. If... Uh, ah, okay. Well, one final question uh, coming in from, I'll just click on select, and it says, uh, 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 can you distinguish the clouds and dust storms on the basis of pictures taken with BMC? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, and, uh, it's actually I think something that was a little surprising when we first when it was first turned back on that you, you, we have that we have that ability to do it. You can certainly uh, in the previous uh, sets of observations we took last year, you could even see the, the gradual sort of dust increasing levels increasing around polar caps um, over a number of weeks. And in fact, to a point where even one of our instruments is actually interested in using the BMC images uh, when they're looking at the CO2 clouds, because you know they can detect them with the with their actual with the infrared in their instruments, but actually being able to see them on a global scale um, helps their research. So it's, it's something that we're, we're looking into. At the moment. Good stuff. Good. Uh, well, so we'll finish up on the questions. Uh, again, to confirm, uh, we, people know how, how to get a hold of us. You've got until uh, noon on the 27th to submit your proposal or to amend your proposal if you've already uh, sent one in. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to, to working with you. We're very excited about this, this campaign. And uh, we'll work very hard to ensure that you get as many uh, good pointing slots as possible within the, the three-day period. And, uh, don't hesitate to, to drop us a note or ask any, any questions. This uh, video will be available for replay in uh, Google Plus and the ASA G Plus uh, channel. It'll be in the ASA YouTube channel as well, youtube.com slash ASA, and you can review it. Uh, we'll post it in the blog when it's done. Uh, this, uh, this video is CC licensed, uh, Creative Commons licensed. You're free to download it, share it, uh, tell your friends about it. Uh, there's no problem with that. We're, uh, we're very happy uh, to have you share it, uh, the more the barrier. I'd like to thank um, Andy and Michael and Simon for joining us today. And I'd like to thank Michelle Denis, who is our Spacecraft Operations Manager for Mars Express here at ESOC. Uh, he's not, uh, wasn't able to be with us today. He's uh, certainly strongly supporting this activity and uh, has allowed you guys to spend some of your time. Normally, yeah. you're a Canadian spacecraft, but uh, yeah. we're doing a little bit of outreach today. I'd like to thank very much uh, here at uh, ESOC my colleague Barbara Weimar, who was working uh, off camera way over there, uh, picking up your questions out of uh, Twitter and out of some of the other channels. Thank you very much, Barbara. And I would like to thank very much uh, my colleague at EJR Quartz, Maria Bennett. She's in Leiden. She's also looking at the back end, making sure that uh, everything worked out properly with uh, Google Hangout technology, which is sometimes a challenge. And that's just about it for today. I'd like to say thank you very much for joining, and uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing your, your submissions. Thanks a lot.